everybody! Today I'll show you how to paint this blue peacock with watercolors. We're going through this step by step, so don't worry if it looks a bit complicated in the beginning. So let's get started by preparing a blank watercolor paper. I used my Winter & Newton cold brushed paper today, but to be honest, this paper is way too fancy for this painting. You don't need to have expensive paper like this. Just any watercolor paper will do. But now let's get to the painting itself. I usually like to start with a good pencil sketch. The colors we're using today are gonna be pretty dark in the end, so we don't need to worry about these lines showing through that much, which is why I went with a pretty detailed sketch today and also used pretty heavy hand. I always recommend you to look through some pictures of real peacocks so you get the basic idea of how they look and how you could capture them on the paper. You can even look through some other paintings and drawings to get the idea of which features you would like to highlight in your own painting. So I started my sketch from the head and the neck part and just tried to figure out the size and shape of this whole thing. While sketching, I mostly tried to just, you know, get the eye in the right place and then I left these stripes on the bird's face that I will eventually leave white. The shape of the head can be almost any round shape and you can also play with the size of the peak and the width of the neck. After the head part, I very roughly sketched the rest of the bird's body and also added some initial guidelines to the tail. We'll pay more attention to the tail in the coloring part, so for now I just drew a few of these teardrop shapes, making them slightly larger towards the bottom of the paper, and then we can worry about them later. Okay, so now that we have a good sketch on the paper, we can finally take out the watercolors and start to color this bird. And I'm doing it in the same order as I did the sketching part. I leave the names of the colors I'm using to the screen and all the tools are also listed to the description below. So first I went with this pretty blue shade and started to build the color little by little. The face has quite many details and texture, so I tried to be super careful with the amount of water I was using to keep everything very precise. As you can see, I'm also using this teeny tiny brush that allows me to make these super small dots and strokes, and I think that's a great way to mimic the small feathers in the bird's head. Then I just kept adding more layers and also changed the tone of the blue shade a bit just to add more variation to the colors. As for the shadows, I started to concentrate a bit more intensity to the chin, then towards the peak and also around the bird's eye. While coloring the eye, don't forget to leave a small highlight to it. I think it often helps to make the eyes look a bit more realistic. But after that, I started to work my way lower towards the bird's body and I used very similar tones of blue with a hint of green to add this almost turquoise hue. Then I started to color these small fish scale looking feathers in the bird's back and I wanted these to have a slightly brighter color so I went with this lighter turquoise shade that was a little bit different from the blues we used so far. I know these colors are not very realistic so if you look through pictures of real peacocks you can see that this part is usually a light green but I didn't want this picture to be super colorful so I kept the colors more around these blues and turquoise tones. With your painting, you can of course do whatever you want, which in my opinion is the most beautiful thing about painting in general. Mm -hmm. 
So now it's finally time to start with the tail feathers which happened to be the biggest challenge for me in this painting. There are so many ways you could draw and color them, but I chose to create these teardrop shapes all throughout the tail, and I first added these turquoise circles inside them. Later I added some black around these to really bring attention to these teardrop shapes and make them stand out. Then personally my favorite part of this painting was adding this silvery gold shimmery color to all these teardrops. I know it might look a little bit weird for now, but in the end these pearly colors create the most beautiful shift when you turn the painting around and I'm absolutely in love with them, I can't get enough. <laughs> the problem for me was to not go overboard with this pearl color because naturally I wanted to slather this color to the whole freaking bird, but I really tried to keep it only on these tail feathers and then I added just the tiniest bit to the plume on top of the bird's head. Then let's start to draw some feathers around these teardrops. It was really hard to choose a color for these and again there are so many directions you could take this painting from here but I decided to start with a similar bluish tone again and then slowly see how much intensity I wanted to detail. I didn't want it to be too dark because actually I already destroyed one bird painting by making it way too dark and colorful and then in the end, especially when you're working with watercolors, it's really easy to just end up creating a huge mess with the colors. So instead, using the same tiny brush, I started to create these simple feather shapes. I wanted some to kind of fly out from the sides to create a more dynamic look to the feathers. But otherwise, I just kept working with these for a good while until I reached the darkness I wanted with the colors. And I think that's pretty much it for the bird. Then as a final finishing touch, I wanted to just add something simple to the background. To be honest, I was so afraid to destroy this whole thing in this point. So I started with very light layers of color and my idea was to draw this tree branch on which the bird is sitting on. You could just leave the background white if you like the look or maybe add some leaves or flowers just for an additional element to your painting. After the background was done, it finally finished this whole painting. I really hope you enjoyed watching this simple tutorial. And if you're new to my channel, I create these art tutorial type videos, uh, mainly videos about bullet journaling. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely consider subscribing. But yeah, I guess that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And see you in my next one. Bye bye.